So if there is a cat in a box and, uh, and uh, there is a, an apparatus inside the box that uh, breaks a vial of poison depending on whether a certain atom decays or not. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that decay is a, is a quantum event. Yeah. It's not a uh, deterministic so event as far random, as I know. It's a random yeah. event. Yeah, yeah but random less. meaning we don't know how it unfolds, so we call it random. Yeah. But depending on whether it happens or not, the vial of, of poison gets broken or not, and therefore yeah. the cat lives or the cat dies. Yeah, exactly. But if that is in a sealed box, before we look at the box and measure whether the cat is alive or dead, we don't know whether the cat is alive or dead. Yeah, yeah. So the cat is in a superposition. Yeah. The cat is both, uh, both alive and dead. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Now, um, this final part of how the scenario is described, I think is nonsensical. The cat is not alive and dead. Um, the, the, the indeterminacy of nature before a measurement mm -hmm. speaks of our inability to know, to know yeah. Yeah. what state nature is in before yeah. we make an observation. Yeah. It, it's not a statement that nature itself in some, some kind of true ontic yeah. superposition of all possibilities yeah. and the cat is alive and dead. Um, so I would dispute that. But it's funny that, sorry to interrupt, but it's funny that uh, I think in an interview with Roger Penrose, he said to me that Schrodinger himself intended this whole thought experiment to show sort of the craziness if you would take it this way, right? So, uh, and but then in popular culture, we all see the thought experiment as saying that the cat literally is dead and alive and that that is the implication of quantum theory. And that has been popularized by the self appointed uh, spokespeople of science, usually people who don't do any science, just talk no. about it, yeah. that the cat is alive and dead, or that particles are both waves and particles. No, 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 they're, they're, no. forget about, uh, about all this. It, 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 these statements go too far. Uh, uh, the data doesn't allow us to make these statements. We, we have to be more cautious. But uh, in, in any case, what we do know is that every time we look, we see physical nature, physical between quotes, mm -hmm. colloquially physical nature. In mm -hmm. other words, the contents of perception. Yeah, the stable. Yeah. yeah. Every time we look, we see nature in an undefined state. Yeah. And we are conscious. And our looking is a conscious process. Yeah. So what we do know is that when conscious beings experience the world around them, yeah. that world is in a defined state yeah. and not in a superposition. Yeah. Under analytic idealism, all living beings are conscious, including bacteria. I think nice, that question nice. is coming. <laughs> that I'm happy to hear. <laughs> um, and so is the cat. So the cat inside the box is experiencing whether the vial of poison was broken or not, yeah, whether the atom, yeah, radioactive yeah, atom, decayed yeah. or didn't decay. Yeah. So what is inside the box is not in a superposition. But we from the outside are not aware of yeah, that. Yeah. Now the question gets trickier if there is no cat inside the box, but there is a chemical that reacts with the poison and changes color. Hmm. It can be pink or it can be blue, mm -hmm. depending on whether the vial yeah, of okay, venom... Because that chemical, chemical is not conscious, it, so it doesn't well, know. It, it's made of consciousness, but it's not a dissociated, localized form of mm -hmm. consciousness that has an internal dashboard of perception. In other words, that doesn't have its own physical world that has its own physical world. The chemical is not that. The chemical does not have a dashboard. So the chemical has no physical world because the physical world is what appears on the screen of perception. Mm. And now you could ask, is the chemical pink or blue before you, make, before you open the box and you mm. look? And now you have to say, uh, theoretically, it's in a superposition. Yeah. What does the superposition mean? It means that all we can say about it is, a, is to assign a probability to it being pink or being blue. Yeah. But we cannot speak of its definite state because pinkness and blueness appear on the screen of perception. And until there is a screen of perception to know what's going on, there is no pinkness and no blueness. Mm, mm. Uh, you see, but the cat does have a screen of perception. So the cat is either dead or alive and we just don't know. Now, whether the chemical is pink or blue only becomes a reality. Um, when something perceives it. Because pinkness and blueness are contents of perception. Yeah. And you cannot speak of pinkness and blueness before you open the box. So if you would reformulate the experiment this way, you would agree that that's what you're saying, that, 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 that 
then I would agree <coughs> that there is a seemingly fundamental limit to our ability to predict or know unmeasured states of non-living nature.